Hey guys, today we are taking a look at the latest machine from Yamaha, the Wolverine X2. And let's not waste any time, let's jump right into it. Let's look at the styling on this new Wolverine. Now, I think Yamaha really followed industry trends by making it super aggressive looking here in the front end. You know, there's lots of angles and triangles. Everything kind of comes together in this big point up here. And these days, it sort of seems like your ATV or side-by-side -side has to look like it's pissed off at all times. And this X2 definitely looks like that. Now let's break down the critical stats on this X2. So this machine is 114.9 inches long, 59 inches wide, 74.8 inches tall, and it has a wheelbase of 82.7 inches. Ground clearance stands at a full 11 inches, and the wet weight is about 1,586 pounds. For those who want to work their X2, this unit has a tow capacity of 2,000 pounds and it has a 2-inch hitch receiver. Wheel travel comes in at 8.7 inches in the front, 8.9 in the rear, and these tires are 26-inch Maxxis ATs. Now let me show you what it's like to get into the X2. So the door handles are on the inside of the door. There's no handles on the outside, and that's because Yamaha says that the handles get muddy, then you have to grab them. So they just put an inside handle. I think that's pretty smart. Now, there's not a ton of space once the door is fully opened here, and the biggest issue with getting in and out is this plastic piece that sticks out right here to support the door. You kind of have to shimmy around it as you get in like this. Now it's really not that bad and once I'm in this cabin I'm comfortable and I'm a wide guy so that's saying something. Now the one thing you do have to accept is this shoulder guard up here which is meant to keep my arm in the machine. I'm leaning on it constantly so I'm going to be making constant contact with it but it's not really that big a deal and it is doing its job. Also helping to ensure my comfort is a tilt steering wheel, which is always an appreciated feature. And this seat slides forwards and backwards. And one of the interesting things is you may have seen it, this shoulder rest actually comes with the seat. I'll show you again. So it doesn't matter where your seat's gonna be, that rest will be in the exact same spot. Now, another thing that I really like about this driver's seating position is the dead pedal. I have a nice dead pedal on the left, and that makes a big difference. Being able to brace your body with your foot just allows me to stick myself into the seat and really hold on tight and the passenger side gets a nicely angled floor and a dead pedal so same thing that passenger is just able to hold themselves in when you have a totally flat floor in a side by side is when you begin to notice how important having that pedal is Leg room here is completely adequate when the seat's pushed all the way back. I could be comfortable in here for hours, and I already have been. I've been riding quite a bit today. Um, that also is added to by just the seats themselves. They're nicely cushioned, not really bolstered, so they're not giving me too much support, but they are comfortable. And then when you look at knee room, I am kind of pushed up against either side with both of my knees, but it's more than enough space. It's not really uncomfortable. And I should add that my right knee's been pushed up against this plastic shroud here in the middle, and I haven't felt any engine heat coming through there at all. Looking at storage in the X2, there are two main places in the cabin. There's a big storage bin down here between the passengers. Now it's partitioned, so you have a front cubby and a rear. Um, and then you have quite a deep glove box and a small cubby up here in the center stack. Now, another area you could store stuff is actually where the passenger seat bottom goes. Now, these seat bottoms pop right off that easily. So if you took this bottom off, it reveals a little space over here where the passenger seat normally goes. And if you didn't have a passenger, you needed to transport something, you could do it right there. But the real storage story here has to do with the bed. Arguably one of the biggest improvements on this Wolverine compared to the old model is right here a dumping bed having a bed that dumps just makes moving all kinds of materials very convenient and this new bed is rated to handle up to 600 pounds of payload 
As you probably noticed, our bed is filled with this Yamaha accessory cargo box. You can get this straight from the company and it is massive. It's quite deep. It's fixed right into your bed and it does offer quite a bit more storage. However, it also takes up about half of the bed. So if I was to own this machine, I probably wouldn't leave it in there at all times. If you are going for, you know, a week long ride or something though, this is definitely going to be something you want to take along. And while we're talking accessories, I also have these rock rails added to my unit from Yamaha. They've actually made a difference today. I did a little rock crawl earlier and I did manage to ding one of them up. I'm always in favor of anything that's going to keep my machine in better shape. So those are a must have. Up front for accessories, we have this windshield, which is really simple to take off. There's just four of these little clips. They open one way and then open back the other way and boom, you can take that windshield off really quickly. It is quite nice to have a windshield, so I appreciate it. And then up front here, we have a worn winch, and I don't need to explain how that thing works. I always recommend having a winch, especially if you did what I did today and hit the trail all by yourself. It's just, you know, another backup, just in case you get a little stuck. The hood up front here is operated by these two clips. And then, whoops, there we go. The entire hood pops off like that, revealing your breather box, your battery, coolant, and access to the speed management system. So if you want to speed limit this thing even further, you can. Now it's time for good, bad, and weird. First, we'll start with the good, and it has everything to do with the steering. The steering in this X2 just has so much life to it, tons of feedback, nice and heavy in your hands. It makes this thing so fun to drive. For the bad, I have to go with the seatbelt. No, no, not because it's not safe, but because of the speed limiting feature and a malfunction. Now, if you don't put your seatbelt on here, you're speed limited. I have no issue with that, but my system hasn't been working properly. My seatbelt is on, I'm out there riding, and then all of a sudden the machine thinks my seatbelt is off, it beeps at me, and a little light flashes, and it just kept doing that all day today. Watch these clips. getting annoying and it's just a shame to see on a brand new unit something's already gone wrong. If I own this thing I would definitely be taking it back to the dealership to get that fixed. And finally a feature I almost made the good but we're gonna call it the weird is a real physical parking brake. Now why is that weird? It's weird because manufacturers these days are getting rid of their parking brakes and just putting park in the transmission. Me personally I don't like that. I like a parking brake that I know is just holding the wheel. It doesn't totally make sense to me why parking brakes are going away. So it's awesome to see Yamaha still has it and it's a little weird. Now let's dig into the nuts and bolts and for sure what is the biggest change that arrived for this unit, a brand new engine. So the power plant here is now an 847cc dual overhead cam parallel twin. Now rumor has it, because Yamaha doesn't release power, but rumor has it that this thing makes about 69 horsepower. The power difference from that old one lung engine to this thing is definitely noticeable right away. But what I actually think you'll notice first is how quiet this new power plant is. Yamaha did all kinds of things, including, you know, just more sound insulation and new helical cut gears to make this thing quieter and they absolutely succeeded. And what's really interesting to me is that at idle and cruising at slow speeds, it's just straight up quiet. But then when you're pushing it on the trail, it does get a lot louder, but there's a big difference. The tone here is very muted, very bassy. Unlike other ATVs and side-by-sides where the engine kind of sounds like it screams, it has a high-pitched scream, even when this Yamaha is at its loudest, it still kind of sounds subdued. So if you're the guy or girl who likes a screaming engine, this might not be the right unit for you. But let me tell you, there's no way this thing will ever get annoying after a day of riding. So now let's talk about how it drives. First of all, things are simple here. You have two wheel drive, four wheel lock, and then you have high and low range. There's no drive modes here or anything like that. 
The steering immediately jumps out at me is probably the best thing about driving this Wolverine. It has really good weighting. It's not too light and it's not numb at all. A lot of the trail comes through to your hands. The EPS really just feels like it's there to dial out the big stuff. If you slam a rock, that's not going to jerk the wheel too hard. But for the most part, this is on the heavier end of the scale for side-by-side -side steering and I really like it. It's really engaging. It just really makes this machine come to life. You know, there's a lot of life in the steering. The gas pedal here uses Yamaha's throttle by wire system and I've had no issues with it. It reacts what feels like instantaneously and it nicely dials out, you know, the trail chatter that you can get from rocking back and forth. And then talking about power, well, there's lots of it. It feels like there's plenty of grunt low in the rev range when you first take off. And then once you're cruising at speed, you can really drive this thing with your right foot and step the tail end out when you're in two wheel drive. And to me, that just means that even in mid revs, there's still a lot of accessible power right there when you nail the throttle. Okay, let's find the top speed in this Wolverine X2. Now I've got it in four wheel drive, high range, a nice empty gravel road, and I'm gonna put my foot to the floor until she don't go no more. So let's see what the speed is limited at, and let's see how long it takes me to get there. I want you guys to time it at home, so get ready. In three, two, one, go! The top speed is 83 kilometers an hour and it gets there pretty quickly. Let me know how long that was in the comments. So how does the suspension work? Well, front and back, there's a little less than nine inches of wheel travel and it does show, you know, this thing doesn't feel like an absolute desert monster, like it can just eat up massive rocks and divots. You definitely feel everything out on the trail. But I will say that while the suspension did feel firm, it never felt stiff. Even when I was really working it and, you know, pretty much bottoming it out, it never really had a moment where it crashed down on me. So even at the limits, it felt like the suspension was doing a nice job of keeping things smooth. And on flat ground, this thing feels nice and balanced. Now the engine is really low down, so I have a low center of gravity. I never once felt a rollover issue. And because of that low center of gravity, right here in the center of the machine, it's not even too far back, it's really right here centralized, I could really hang the back end out and feel confident about it. So you can have a ton of fun on dirt trails. And the last big question, what does it all cost? Well, the Wolverine EPS, like we have it here in the United States, sells for $12,700, while here in Canada, it starts at 17 grand. After spending a day with this redesigned X2, it's clear to me that Yamaha left no stone unturned. This thing has more power, more utility functionality, and it's way more fun to drive than its predecessor. So what more could you ask for? So that's it for this episode, guys. Make sure you hit subscribe right now to TFL Off-Road and come back here for the latest news, views, and real-world reviews. See ya.